I've got a brilliant app idea, but no money. What do I do? How do I find an investor and how do I raise funding and how much should I raise? Well, I frequently get these questions from entrepreneurs with fantastic app ideas, but not much money to kick things off. Here's the deal. Raising money is hard and most entrepreneurs with amazing startup ideas face the same funding challenge. Lack of cash can dim even the brightest of ideas. So if you've got a great app idea, but your wallet's looking a bit sad, don't worry. I've got you covered in this video. We will break down the four options to raising funds without giving away equity, four T's that the investors focus on while investing in your startup idea, four essential collaterals to prepare while fundraising, and nine best resources and strategies to help you find the ideal potential investor. So be sure to stick around till the end and hit that subscribe button because it helps me help you. And real quick, I'm giving away my startup fundraising secret crash course for just $7, which could be an absolute game changer and help you secure the funding you're looking for. Check out the link in the description below. Now, why would investors invest in your startup idea? They won't just do it because they like you, although that would be nice, but they will invest in your startup idea because of a very strategic reason. And it's important to understand that reason so that you can make a decision whether you should actually raise funding or not. The reason why you should reconsider fundraising is because this funding will be the most expensive cash you will ever buy. Now, in other words, if you don't have much traction or if your startup is not making money yet, then you are a very risky bet for an investor. So they would want a huge stake in exchange for their funding, hence the most expensive cash you will ever buy. Now, when investors take a high risk, they want a much higher equity, thus diluting your shares in your company. So what's the alternative? Well, there are quite a few ways to kickstart your project while preserving a significant portion of your ownership and control in your company. Let's discuss the top four options that you can consider. Number one is bootstrapping. And this one's pretty cool because it's like being your startup's financial superhero. You can tap into your own savings or hit up your family and friends for some moolah. The best part, you call the shots. And whatever profits roll in, yep, that's all yours to keep. It's like building your startup empire from the ground up without giving away a piece of your equity. Now, for example, WhatsApp, founded by Brian and Jan, began as a bootstrap project, with Jan using his personal savings to cover the server costs. It later became a global sensation and, as all of us know, was acquired by Facebook for $19 billion. Number two is grants. Now, grants are like golden tickets for your business. There are loads of organization, governments, and foundations out there just waiting to sprinkle some fairy dust on your startup. They offer you money without asking for a chunk of your company in return. You just need to find the right grant that matches your business goal. For example, Elon Musk's SpaceX secured a significant grant from NASA through the Commercial Resupply Services Program, enabling the development of the Dragon spacecraft for transporting cargo to the International Space Station. Number three is loans. If you are thinking about starting a serious business, banks and other lenders can lend you the money to get your business going. But remember, you will need to pay it back with a little extra. They call it interest. The good news, you won't have to give away any piece of your baby, your business that is. For example, Warby Parker, the online eyewear retailer, initiated its business with loans to finance inventory and operational expenses before attracting VCs, venture capital investment, to fuel its expansion. Number four is crowdfunding. Picture it as a startup party where everyone contributes to get your idea moving. Platforms like Kickstarter, Indiegogo, GoFundMe are the hosts of such a party. You bring your concept, the people from around the world chip in some money. Now, they're not just doing it for being nice, they're actually gonna get some rewards or early access. You will decide what is it that they get in return. It's not only a cash boost, it's also a fantastic way to show that your idea is a hit. If people are ready to back it up, you're onto something significant. For example, the Oculus VR, the virtual reality company, initially gained momentum through a highly successful Kickstarter campaign, raising roughly around 2.4 million for its headset, ultimately leading to an acquisition by Facebook for $2 billion. Now, each of these options has its pros and cons, so pick up the one that fits your goals and financial 
situation. Now, let's say you do decide to go for the fundraising route. In that case, it's essential to have a deep understanding of the fundraising process and a clear grasp of what the investors are looking for in your startup concept. Now, there are four key things that the investors focus on, which I like to call the four T's. Let me break down each one of these for you. Number one is team. A strong, capable team is the backbone of any successful venture. Investors look for a diverse group with a blend of skills and relevant experience for that specific startup. Now, they need to be convinced that your team possesses the ability to not only conceive a great idea, but also execute the business plan effectively. So strong leadership, teamwork, and adaptability are some of the essential qualities that stand out to the investors. For example, Stripe. Why? Because Stripe's success in the fiercely competitive payment processing industry is largely attributed to its outstanding team that was assembled by the co-founders Patrick and John. Number two is the total addressable market or TAM. Investors want to be sure that your app idea has a big and a growing market known as the total addressable market. And it's not just the market size that matters, it's how well you know that market also matters. Showing that you understand your target market's needs, trends, and problems really boosts confidence. Being knowledgeable about the market lets you shape your business plan in the right way. For example, Netflix. Why? Netflix is a prime example of understanding and capitalizing on the total addressable market. They initially recognized the growing demand for streaming services and identified a vast and expanding market. Number three is technology. Now, in a competitive landscape, investors are eager to know what makes your app stand out. They're interested in understanding your unique value proposition and what differentiators you bring to the table. This means showing how your app solves a real problem or addresses unmet needs in a unique way. For example, Tesla. Why? Because Tesla revolutionized the automotive industry with its electric vehicles and advanced technology. Now, their innovative approach to solving environmental and transportation problems through cutting edge technology has set them apart from traditional automakers. Number four is traction. Now, gaining traction is critical. Investors want to see tangible evidence that your startup is gaining momentum. This might be early customers, revenue, partnerships, or any significant achievements. Now, I understand that showing traction to investors when you only have an idea can be challenging, but it's not impossible. Investors want to see that your idea has the potential to be successful, and you could show that by market research, idea validation, user feedback, team's expertise, and any partnership or competitive analysis. Early investors often invest in the founding team and vision rather than just the current state of your startup. For example, Airbnb. Why? Because Airbnb gained significant traction by demonstrating the proof of concept. They started with a few individuals renting out air mattresses in their apartment, and this concept quickly grew into a global platform for property rentals. So in summary, when presenting your startup to the investors, a well-rounded focus on these four T's can significantly enhance your chances of securing funding. But that's all fine. How do you prepare for fundraising? What are the necessary collaterals required to raise funding? Well, preparing for fundraising involves creating a comprehensive set of marketing materials to effectively convey your startup's potential to investors. Here's a quick breakdown of the four key things that you need to prepare. Number one is the business plan. Now, this document serves as the foundation for your pitch to the investors. It should include detailed information about your business model, target market, competitive analysis, revenue projections, marketing strategy, and overall business strategy. Also describe your team, their qualifications, and their roles in the company. The more clarity you have, the more better it would be. Highlight your mission, vision, and core values to give investors a sense of company culture you plan to build. Number two is the pitch deck. Create a visually engaging presentation that complements your business plan. It should be concise and compelling. Typically within 15, uh, 10 to 15 slides is okay. Include visuals, charts, and key points to make your pitch more captivating. Your pitch deck should tell a compelling story about your startup, addressing the problem you're solving, the solution, the market opportunity, and your path to success. Number three is the financial projections. Now, in addition to the funding required and cash flow forecast, break down your financials by month, 
quarter and even yearly. Clearly articulate your revenue model and growth strategy. Investors want to see that you've thought through how to generate revenue and achieve profitability. Number four is valuation. Explain in detail how you've arrived at your startup's valuation. Now this can be a critical factor for the investors. Consider market comparables, which involves comparing your startup to similar companies in terms of industry, growth stage, and financial metrics. You'll need to identify comparable companies and analyze their valuations to arrive at an estimate for your own. A well-prepared valuation not only demonstrates your professionalism, but also instills confidence in the investors that you've thoroughly assessed your company's worth. Once you have all the essential collaterals ready, it's time to reach out to the investors. But how do you find the right investors? Well, finding an investor for your app idea can be challenging, but it's a crucial step in turning your vision into a reality. The first thing you'll have to do is to identify the right investor by defining your ideal investor profile. Consider factors like relevant industry expertise, the location, and the type of funding source you need, whether it's angel investors, venture capitalists, or others. This initial understanding will help you target investors who align with your startup's specific needs. Now, once you've done that, then you leverage the best resources and strategies to help you find the ideal potential investor. Let's discuss each one of those. Number one is the online platform. So use websites like AngelList, Crunchbase, and Gust to find angel investors in VC firms, and LinkedIn can also help you with finding potential investors. For example, you can create a profile of your app startup on AngelList, showcase your app's features and potential, and then send messages to the investors on the platform to gauge their interest. Number two is startup incubators and accelerators. Now, organizations like Y Combinator, Techstar, and 500 startups offer not only funding, but also mentorship and resources to help your startup grow. Now, for example, if you're working on a fintech, tech app, consider applying to an accelerator like Techstars, where you can get funding, mentorship, and access to a network of investors and advisors in the fintech industry. Number three is the angel investors group. Research online to identify any angel investor groups operating in your city. Now, these groups pool resources to evaluate and fund startups. Now, websites like ACA, Angel Capital Association, and Gust provide directories of angel investor groups you can search for groups by location and industry focus. For example, TCA, Tech Coast Angels, is one of the largest and most active angel investor groups in the United States. Then you have Golden Seeds, New York Angels, and Boston Harbor Angels. Then you have IAN, Indian Angel in Network, is one of the largest angel investor networks in India. Number four is networking events and conferences. Attend industry-specific events, conferences, and meetups where you can meet and network with potential investors. Now, these events provide an opportunity to make valuable connections. For example, uh, attend a tech conference like TechCrunch Disrupt or a local meetup for entrepreneurs in your area. At these events, you can meet potential investors, probably give an elevator pitch, and exchange contact information. Number five is pitch competitions. Many organizations and events host pitch competitions where your startup can showcase their potential idea to a panel of judges, including potential investors. For example, in the uh, mass challenge pitch competition, you can present your app idea to a panel of judges, some of whom are angel investors or even venture capitalists. Number six is business plan competition. Similar to the pitch competition, some universities and organizations hold business plan competitions competitions with cash prizes and investor exposure for the winners. For example, in the Rice Business Plan competition, you can compete against other startups and gain exposure to investors and mentors. Number seven is the online equity crowdfunding. Now, similar to crowdfunding, equity crowdfunding websites like Seed Invest, Crowdcube, and Start Engine allow you to raise capital from a broader pool of investors in exchange for equity in your startup. So it's slightly different to what you normally see in crowdfunding. So you do give away a piece of your equity. Number eight is venture capital firms. Now research VC firms that specialize in your industry or type of app. Many venture capital websites where they provide information on their investment criteria and how to pitch them. For example, if you have a health tech app, so research the VC firms that specialize in the health tech startups such as Sequoia Capital, 
and visit their website to learn about their investment criteria and their focus and get some contact details and reach out to them. Number nine is LinkedIn and social media in general. So use social media and professional networking sites like LinkedIn to connect with potential investors and join relevant groups and discussions to establish relationships and gain insights. So there you have it. If you're seeking funding for your app idea, keep these tips in mind and save this video or share with a friend. While I've shared some valuable tips to guide you on this exciting journey, it's crucial to bear in mind that finding the right investor can be a challenging endeavor. Nevertheless, here's the key. With the right approach, dedication, and a strong belief in your idea, you're already one step closer to turning your app vision into a reality. And as I mentioned before, if you're hungry for even more insights into the world of fundraising, I've got something special for you. My $7 Startup Fundraising Secrets Crash Course is an absolute game changer. It'll help you get started in the right journey that could be the catalyst to securing the funding you need to propel your app to greater heights. So just click on the link in the description below to get started because now is the time for action. Don't just sit there dreaming. Take the first bold step towards your app's success. Get out there, hustle, and make those dreams come true. If you've got a great idea, then it's time to change the world one download at a time. Thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.